Good evening, I'm DK Ronster. Welcome back to the TTT News. The Creative Tech Lab of Trinidad and Tobago, or CTLTT, is an initiative that's organized by Kubriri and powered by Baj in partnership with IDB Lab and Facebook to connect to creatives and developers and stimulate innovation and creativity. Now, that is all factual, but we want to go a little further than that. So we'll be speaking with Mark Alain Bosico. He is the CEO of Baj. We also have Hayden Charles, who is the program leader, ICT, at Kariri. So, gentlemen, we want to thank you for joining us. And, Hayden, I want to start off with you, please. Because normally when I hear Kariri, yes, I think technology. Yes, I think development. But I more think about agro, agriculture, agro-processing. Um, broaden my horizons and give me a little idea of what career is really involved in tax. Curry has been a primarily a testing agency in, in Trinidad and Tobago for a very long time. We've been in existence for over 50 years and we are the premier testing agency in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. However, within the last 10 years, we have broadened out into entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, about seven years ago, we established the Center for Enterprise Development at Freeport, where we assist um, young entrepreneurs in getting, in, in, in getting a foothold to be able to uh, establish and grow their businesses. We are also heavily involved in innovation and through the years, we've partnered a lot with the Inter-American Development Bank to execute a number of innovation projects. We are currently uh, executing a project assisting individuals and SMEs to commercialize innovative ideas. One might enter that program either with an idea or something a little more developed, and we take them either to the stage where they prove that idea or, or directly onto commercialization. And it is in that way that um, the Banj came to, to our notice, having executed an innovation project recently. And also, as a result of COVID um, and the cancellation of Carnival, we were looking at ways to see how our innovation project can assist the creative sector in Trinidad and Tobago. And we were introduced through Ms. Vashti Duki Singh at the Inter-American Development Bank to Mark and his company. And it took off from there. And I want to get back to innovation as it pertains to tangible things that we can see outside of the digital realm. But before we do that, I want to introduce or include Mark in the discussion, please. And Mark, give us a little idea of what the Banj is, the history of the Banj, and what it is you do. Thank you, DK. It's really a pleasure for me tuning in straight from Haiti to be on your platform and saying hi to everyone in Trinidad right now. Um, we are um, a co-working space and innovation hub. We're three years old. We've been operating in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and we're a Google-powered accelerator. So we've been very involved in growing technology and bringing innovation to the community of Port-au-Prince. And one of our one of our most exciting projects was actually last year when we wanted to bring developers and creative together inside a lab, the creative tech lab, bringing them together and seeing how the mind of creatives, the creativity that's coming from traditional creativity and connecting that with the values of new technologies, using technology like augmented reality, um, AI and uh, machine learning and seeing how all these blockchain technology can actually create innovation. Um, we've had a successful experience in Haiti where entrepreneurs created startups that are tackling some of the interesting issues in the creative industry. And when Carnival was canceled in Trinidad, we were more than pleased and excited to connect with Kariri, also involved in innovation in Trinidad to see how we can bring that methodology bringing those creative from the carnival industry in Trinidad and some of the developers, applications are still open. We're hoping they can join and be challenged to create tech solutions that can help in, you know, create value and change the narrative of Trinidad leveraging technology and seeing how carnival can be scaled online. 
I'm happy to be here. And, and I'll ask both of you gentlemen, and I'll start off with you, please, Hayden. How important is it to be able to use disruptions as they are happening to be the catalyst for innovations and new ways of doing things? Because sometimes you may be working and saying, okay, well, this is what we have, and we can try to improve, but saying, okay, well, we need to do something that is very different and being able to use. And you said it's like about 10 years that the innovation aspect has been at the, at the forefront of some of Kariri's efforts. So what do we make of a time like this? It, it is both a challenge and an, an opportunity. Um, IDB has, has a, 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 a motto, um, IDB Lab, on follow where they are encouraging you to not go the in the direction where everyone else is going. You need to differentiate yourself. You need to use your innovativeness to create something that is different from what, what, what already exists. Otherwise, you'll just be competing on the same level. And it is with that in mind, that disruptive approach that, that Curry has encouraged over 800 um, individuals and SMEs to, 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 to um, submit applications to our project um, for ideas that, that they may have been contemplating for many years, it's just in their mind, or perhaps it's something that they have actually started doing, uh, uh, baking some kind of special cake with different ingredients, um, doing different things, and uh, they just never had that avenue, that, that in order for them to, to, to turn this into some kind of profitable venture. And this is what the Idea Advisory Service, which is a service um, that we operate out of the Center for Enterprise Development, um, that is what we are geared towards helping persons. The, the, the project that we are currently uh, executing in partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank is called Bridging the Gap to commercial application of innovation. Because most pe people, they have that innovative spirit. They are doing things that are different, but they cannot bridge that gap to be able to whatever they, they are engaged in. And that is what we are helping persons to do, to bridge that gap. And I see, I see both of you gentlemen are chomping at the bit to give a little more information and have people uh, submit their applications. So we're going to do that on the other side. But I want to ask you, Mark, do you feel the same way? And I say that because with regard to the badge, uh, I see that you have a saying that the sky is not. You are the limit. So what do you say about using a disruption as a catalyst of in innovation and moving forward? I am actually very excited that um, we were able to do all of this digitally. You know, that's already like a proof of innovation. Um, us being here in Port au Prince, powering, taking over the ecosystem, leveraging amazing platform like TTT or all the other partners who are coming around this, just to send a message asking the Trinidadian, what does Carnival Online mean for them? And what does the world need to know about the culture? And what can they leverage? I think new technologies are uh, immersive and they are taking over the world, especially with COVID, we're leveraging a lot of new technologies. And my question to people in Trinidad is, how can you use those technologies and create another experience and let the world take advantage of the beauty and the history of this amazing product that you have that is the carnival? So yes, this is a challenge. And I think it's a challenge for the developer community particularly, and also all the creatives who are involved in the business of Carnival. I think this is a moment. I think this platform and this project is actually raising many different questions to kind of infuse innovation into the population and thinking, what can we do differently? What does COVID bring as new opportunity? How can you leverage technology to create new things? And we're hoping that these products that are going to be created, they will be tech product, they will be leveraged, used not just by people in Trinidad, but by people around the world who believe that innovation can actually bring new realms of creativity. And it is not, we're not trying to replace Carnival. I know people in Trinidad are saying that, you know, there's no virtual wine possible. 
we're only adding an option. We're only creating that opportunity for technology to be able to help you market what you're doing, create new economic opportunities for developers and for the creatives and business people involved in the carnival industry. I think technology has proven to be um, a teaser, a marketing um, element that can only allow when things open up again for more people to be interested in the culture of Carnival and that product that Trinidad has to offer. And one of the things I want to speak about when we come back is how we can leverage that technology, but at the same time retain ownership of a product. But we will speak about that when we return. Uh, we are speaking about the Creative Tech Lab Trinidad and Tobago. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Hayden Charles and Mark Alain Bossi called about the Creative Tech Lab Trinidad and Tobago. And yes, Hayden and Mark, I know you all were chomping at the bit. So give us a little idea about there is a deadline to register. What do people register to be a part of and when is that deadline? Because I believe it was moved back a few days. Yes, absolutely. So the deadline then is also concerning specifically software developers. So the creatives that are part of the um, Tech Lab, we've been seeing them on the show, and they are all available on a website that is available on Kerry's, um page and all of our media partners, they can go there. Um, we're looking for software developers interested in taking a challenge of using new technologies to create new products. So we have a 20, April 20th deadline, which is our last deadline for them to just go ahead and apply and we asked just a few questions about their interest, why they want to be part of this. Do they already have a project that they've been working on that can create opportunity for Carnival to go online? And the idea is not that we're going to be executing this project. We're going to have a series of events online, digitally, to kind of have them enhance better these type of ideas and also working together and create that collaboration, which is the biggest value of this activity for them to come down and narrow down to create projects that we will then give to carry me so they can showcase and keep pushing the idea of having Carnival online. So deadline is April 20th for software developers, last deadline. Yeah. All right, so and Hayden, are there other deadlines or other things that people can look out to? Because I believe there's also a survey that people can uh, submit uh, some of their thoughts and perceptions of what they think may be uh, best ways or best practices going forward. I appreciate um, the background research. Um, DK, um, yes, there's definitely um, a, a form that's out there. This form is out there just to get information from anyone who has idea, because this is a new um, initiative. And the beauty about innovation is really about leveraging design thinking to be closer to the user. So we're really asking people, tell us a little bit about what you think Carnival Online can mean. It's open out there, it's a three minute survey. You can definitely just throw ideas and these ideas we will be sharing them with the participants of the lab so they can um, better shape the type of project that they are creating. And after the deadline, since you were asking about other dates, they are a series of events and we're happy to partner um, with TTT um, to just really broadcast this type of content to the community. So there are other dates that are coming. Watch for May 1st, where we're going online for networking. We're gonna have a series of panel discussions on May 2nd and 3rd. Then we will be bringing trainings on new technologies and the business of Carnival in Trinidad and Tobago. So there's a lot for you to learn out of this series of, um, of events that are happening online. And we will be having an offline hackathon. It's just not going to be live on the internet, but we will be doing it digitally. And at the end, after all these discussions, trainings and networking, we are hoping to be able to come back online on June 1st to introduce to the community online the products that came out of the Creative Tech Club of Trinidad and Tobago. And hopefully they will be happy. Hopefully it will reflect what they are expecting as a product of Carnival. We're not just talking about live events. We are talking about any type of products that can leverage technology to put value on the Carnival. All right, and Hayden, I want to get your, I want to get your take, please, because I'm not sure if I should be asking for a personal uh, set of expectations or one from Kariri, but I also, into that mix, I want to throw uh, something that Mark said. So it's not necessarily that one replaces the other, but one can highlight and build a sense of anticipation for when you're actually able to be in Trinidad and Tobago physically once again. So according to one of our artists, you, you see that first FET? Well, <laughs> it's going to be madness. But what, what are you looking forward? What are your expectations out of this? 
these solutions that are coming out of this, um, this project that we're doing here are not to replace Carnival as Mark indicated. They are to complement Carnival going forward. So where the lockdown continues, one will be able to experience Carnival as best as possible virtually. Um, but however, when the Carnival does return, we hope to have solutions that would complement the various activities during Carnival, and it would be just as popular. Uh, so persons who might not be able to make it in person to our Carnival, um, uh, pre-Carnival activities and, and our, our Monday and Tuesday parades, they would be able to experience Carnival, and not just Soka Monarch being, being aired um, over the internet, on, on Carnival Friday night, but all of the activities leading up to Carnival and also Carnival Monday and Tuesday. So it's solutions that complement Carnival and not replace it. And what do you think for um, solutions, like you said, that may be providing for hybrid methods? So we're catering to people who may be there. We're also catering to people who, like you said, may not be able to make it because truth of the matter is, Resources will need to be built back in certain ways. People are trying to get things back in gear. But um, in terms of being able to address more than one platform at that point in time, so it's not just physical, not just virtual. Are these some of the things you're hoping for as well? Yes, definitely. It would be a hybrid solution, hybrid solutions, catering for persons who might be, they might be here, they might be in Trinidad, they might be at the FET, but to enhance their experience while they are at a, at a carnival activity. Just working to see how we could complement this beautiful um, festivity that, that, that we have here that is carnival that is not truly being explored to its fullest potential. And in terms of some of the things, Mark, I want to get back to you because we have about two minutes more. What are some of the past projects that would have shown the potential of Banj and this sort of partnership, because both of you gentlemen spoke about partnerships, but we didn't necessarily speak about the partnership with IDB. So what are some of those past projects that you would have been involved in over the three short years of existence, Mark, to say, that, okay, this is something that we can do. We can reach out to this brother in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and we are going to work forward to get it. Um, I wanted to um, very quickly say that um, when we talk about uh, the carnival experience, it really doesn't mean just live events. It's really about um, opportunity for you to showcase um, costumes, dance, music. Technology can actually help in many of these areas. You know, how do we showcase the history, the culture? Um, um, I, I will just speak very quickly about the past um, um, a project that came out, the Creative Tech Lab in Haiti. So we had, for example, projects that leverage blockchain to create platform that can actually secure the work of creatives. So basically leveraging the technology of blockchain to be able to keep track of who created what and how um, the uh, profits can be spread from the creative work. We had people who created 3D versions. So maybe I'm looking at maybe 3D versions of, of, of costumes that are coming out of the carnival so we can enjoy them. And maybe we, we, we could be looking at leveraging the technology of virtual reality to have people hanging out in the virtual world, enjoying some, some of those festivities together. It can also be an opportunity for people who would be producing and delivering delivering products around the carnival to kind of recreate the carnival for each person individually in their house. There are many, many different ways you could use technology to create. And I think I will close with the, um, saying that a study actually have shown that when you go with the virtual world, it doesn't replace actually the real world, it actually increases demand for it. Because when people have these snippets of experiences, they only want more, and that's as been a and reality. It only, it only whets that appetite. But gentlemen, hopefully this conversation whet the appetite of people to actually go on to the career website, get more information, and be a part of this fabulous initiative. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the news team, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm DK Rosta. Have a good night.